I'm Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. It is time for an episode of What's New at Ancestry. This is for February 2022. If you've never joined us for a What's New episode before, we're going to briefly cover some of the upcoming genealogical conferences and events. We're going to talk about some of the changes and updates made on Ancestry to different features on the site and on the mobile app. Then we're going to cover some of the new historical content that's been added to the site since our last episode. So lots to cover today. Let's go ahead and dive in to what's new at Ancestry for February 2022. First up, genealogical uh, community conferences and events. Of course, the big news is the largest conference held globally, and that is Roots Tech Connect, sponsored by Family Search. It, uh, again, this year will be entirely virtual and completely free. So if you have not yet registered, I encourage you to do that. Go over to rootstech.org to sign up and get some uh, additional information about uh, the conference. It starts one month from today on March 3rd. The conference will officially be held the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of March, but there's a lot of content being created for the con conference that will be available um, after the conference as well. If you want a full rundown of what Ancestry has prepared for the Roots Tech Conference, you can go over to the Ancestry Facebook page. And there you will find a live video that I did on Tuesday of this week. And I cover all of the learning paths and some of the other uh, things that Ancestry will be presenting at the conference, including some sneak peeks at some of our announcements, one of which I'll cover later in this video. There are, of course, other genealogical conferences and events going on around the country here in the United States and globally. And if you need to know what's happening um, that way, just Google your local genealogical society or um, state genealogical society to see what they have planned for 2022. As we get closer to some of the other events, I will share with you details about those as well. Next up, we're going to talk about some of the new and updated tools and experiences on Ancestry. We're going to start with a feature called We Remember. So We Remember is a website hosted by Ancestry where you can create free online memorials for your loved ones. Um, and it's a great place to collect photographs and memories and information about them. Um, in the case of my aunt, so I'll just show you, we'll take you, um, oh, let's try that again. We're going to take you straight to the website here. Um, and I'm going to show you the memorial page that I created for my aunt. She passed away a uh, little over a year ago. And I was invited by our family to write her obituary. And so in addition to publishing that obituary, with the funeral home on their website, I wanted to make sure it had a permanent home here so that it was always available. So here is her obituary and some photos. And then um, I also it also has this opportunity to invite other people to share their memories and to upload photos of her as well. And so um, it's a really great opportunity to collect that information and preserve it in, um, in a place that uh, it will be available. Now, you always could link uh, to other places. And in this case, I linked to her profile in my tree. But the new feature that we have added here on the We Remember site is that you can share this to your Ancestry tree now. So I can click um, share to Ancestry. It's going to pull up the information um, or the, my trees on my account. I don't want myself, I want my Aunt Rhonda. There she is. And then I'm going to click save. And that's gonna save that info or this the link to this um, to her in the tree. So it has information here about the date that uh, the obituary was, was written or created. I can put in some additional information. I can choose to show it on the life story. If I want to add it or link it to other people that are mentioned um, in the memorial, I can do that. And then I can click save and it will save that to the tree. Now, here's what that's going to look like then over on my ancestry tree. So here is her profile page 
in my tree. And now you can see there is a link to her uh, We Remember page here under other sources that has uh, the source citation created automatically for you based on the details that you entered, a link to that page. It also links to a fact in her timeline. Um, both of those are clickable and will take you back to the We Remember page. So that's um, kind of how that functions. And I think it's a great new feature. If you're not familiar with, Re with We Remember, please go check that out. And if you are, you can now save those as links directly to your ancestry tree. Okay, let's talk about what's next. Up next, let's talk a little bit about the logged in homepage. So last episode, I explained to you that we were currently in the process of migrating people over to the new logged in homepage on Ancestry. So a little bit of background because I've been getting a load of questions about this. So Ancestry had a legacy homepage that was really, really old. <laughs> and then we had what we called the two tile homepage, which had two giant tiles with trees and DNA. And that allowed you to, um, you know, go directly to one of those places, but then all of the rest of the stuff was below the fold. Um, and we received some really great feedback from users on both of those homepages, but just to kind of maintain some consistency and some stability on the platforms on Ancestry, we need to get everybody migrated over to a unified singular experience so that we then can start to make some additional um, changes based on customer feedback. So we are still in the process of moving everyone over. So I think what we just finished is everyone that was on the legacy homepage in the United States has now been moved over to the new homepage. And so we're just going to continue to roll that out. Of course, all new users who come onto Ancestry will come directly into this homepage experience. If you have feedback, we would love to hear it. You can leave it here in the comments. The product manager responsible for that is um, following along closely and would love to hear it. Now, if you've got feedback, it's super helpful if you provide specific feedback. So just saying, you know, I love it or I hate it not as helpful as saying, um, you know, whatever the specific concerns are, if there's something missing or something you want to be different, or if there's something you really love about it, um, please let us know in the comments. Okay, so that's the status of the logged in homepage. Last episode, we also talked about some improvements that are being made to the search results page. We specifically talked a little bit about the search wizard and the quick fill. We talked about um, some new hint badges, and then we talked about smart filtering. So if you missed that, go back to the last episode of What's New at Ancestry, which was in December, and you can um, watch that. In the description for the video, there's actually links directly to the different sections. So you can jump directly to the section about improvements to search if that's all you want to listen to. So here is what is new this time. So this time, oh, I went too far. There we go. Okay. This time we have some new hint badges. So um, we're, we tested what we had. People responded really well. They really loved it. It met a specific need that people had been asking for us to, to take care of. And so now we have provided a, some new hint badges that are doing the same thing. Now, these new hint badges are still being rolled out. So uh, just know that if you don't have them yet, you will soon. So this is a person in my tree. You'll notice I've got some records attached to him here. I've got some hints that I haven't done anything with yet. And when I click search from the person in my tree, it's going to take me, of course, to my search results page. And my internet's going to go a little bit slow because I'm also, you know, using the internet to record and I'm on wireless. Wow, that internet speed makes a big difference, y'all. <laughs> okay, let's hit it again and see if we can get it to speed up or something. Oh, good heavens. I've gotten used to having super fast Wi-Fi, obviously. Okay, so um, here is the search results page. Like always, nothing has changed. Now, just for the purposes of this, I'm actually going to edit this search down here at the bottom, and I'm going to remove stories, and I'm going to remove photos from my search results, just because I want a more consolidated list of search results so I can show you these new badges. If you didn't know those little things existed, that's what they do. Okay, 
So um, here is my search results for this third great grandfather of mine. And, and what we talked about last month is that you have this one that says this one's in your hints, right? Or this, you know, if there's one that you've already saved to your tree, it will show you that one. As a matter of fact, if I just switch this all collections to United States and click apply, I'm going to narrow this search list even more. Oh, I've got smart filtering turned on. That's why. Okay. So you can see now um, these little badges that we're putting on your search results. So one of the new badges that is coming, if you don't have it yet, is when you last looked at this record. So a couple of visual cues that you'll have that you've already looked at this record. One is that the link will turn purple. So instead of being a blue link, it will be a purple link. Um, just like everywhere else on the internet. <laughs> and then you'll see this new little badge here about when it was last, when you last viewed this record. Um, if you viewed it two months ago or six hours ago or nine months ago, three weeks ago, whatever, it'll say that. Um, those badges are only for a year though. So just so you know, after a year, it kind of refreshes. If you click the link, it will take you to the record, like always. If you click the badge, it's gonna take you to a page that some of you may not even know existed. And that's your recent activity page. So we actually save all sorts of searches. Um, we save all the searches that you do so that you can come in and you can actually just click that and it will redo the search for you without you having to redo it yourself. Um, and we also then have this list now of content records that you've actually viewed so that you can click through to those. So if you didn't know this page existed, the, um, if you just want to view it, you can go to search all collections. And then if you scroll down just right here past the search box, you're going to see your recent searches. You can click view all. And that also takes you to that recent activity page where you can then look at the different things um, over here on the left-hand column. So that's an exciting new change and a feature you may not have known existed um, that will help you with your searches and your researches. Okay, because that's what we do as researchers is we, we research. Okay, bad, bad pun. Sorry about that. No, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about some changes that were recently made to the person gallery. So at some point in the past, um, probably about six or eight years ago, Ancestry made the decision to take thumbnails of the records that you had saved on Ancestry and to show those in the gallery. A couple of challenges came up over the course of time. Um, and so this change was made to address some of those issues that you all were bringing to us. So the first one is some of you are brilliant at uploading loads and loads of photos of people in your family tree. The problem is if you have loads of photos and you have loads of records, they were all kind of getting muddled up in that person gallery and it was hard to see what you had and what you didn't have. The second issue is that the thumbnails in the gallery were actually a duplicate of the image that was already thumbnail, the thumbnail that was already attached to the source citation. And so sometimes people got confused, like, is this, do I have this in my tree twice? What's happening here? Um, and so we needed to address that a little bit. Um, and then also we have, this is a little sneak peek, some really cool um, photo features coming soon. And so we wanted to be able to just kind of clean up the gallery so that you knew exactly what images you had and what images you didn't have. Now, you didn't lose anything. Uh, for those of you, for example, who sync with Family Tree Maker or with Roots Magic, those desktop software genealogy programs, all of the images from all of the source citations are still being copied onto your computer through your desktop software. It's just that we've removed them from the, the gallery view. So now when I click here to go to my grandfather's gallery, I just see the photographs that I've uploaded. I don't see all of the other things. Those other things are still here. They're going to be here on the facts tab under sources. So I can still click same number of clicks, right? Instead of going gallery and then clicking on the thumbnail, I just am in the, when I'm in the facts tab, which is where I kind of live, um, I click to view the source citation and then I can go directly to view the image or the record. Um, so it actually is a little bit handier from this particular view. 
So that's, they're still there, still attached, still connected to all of this information here. So hopefully that is, that clears some things up, um, helps you understand a little bit why we made that change. Now let's go back over here to the gallery because um, we also have um, a new feature. I think I talked about it um, a little bit last time when I talked about the Ancestry mobile app. So those of you who use the free Ancestry mobile app may have already seen this feature, but we are now in the process of rolling it out to desktop users as well. So when you have any photo in your tree, you can come in here to this photo and you can um, edit this photo and add it, attach it to as many people in your tree as you want. In this case, here's my cute grandpa and his dad and his older sister and his younger sister. I'm fairly certain it was his mother taking the photo. Um, I'm pretty sure I know exactly where in California this photo was taken. And, um, and I've got it attached to all of them here with a little bit of details about when and where it was taken. You can edit that information at any time. None of that has changed. But now, um, in under the tools, there is a new feature, which is that you can actually edit the photo. So edit the metadata or the details or who it's attached to is over on the right in the workspace side panel. But editing the photo is under this little wrench, which of course means tools, right? Um, so I'm going to click edit. And now what I have the option to do here is I can colorize this photo. Um, and that gives me some colorization options there. I can um, restore this photo and that kind of cleans it up if there's some um, damage to the image in some way. Um, or I can just click enhance and it, it kind of does both of those things at once. Now, um, these are some new tools and some photos are cleaner or more different, you know, easier or more difficult than others, but um, it just then creates um, uh, another view of your photo. So it's not creating additional photos. It's not going to um, cause any of those like duplicate issues. It is just going to allow you to toggle back and forth here between an original and uh, an enhanced version of that particular photo. So again, um, in your photo gallery, in your tree, you can uh, click on any photo. And we have a little banner there with some information about it. So if you have this feature, you'll probably see that little banner. And if you don't have it yet, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, let's move on. We talked about changes in the person gallery. Uh, that is what we have for new and updated tools and features on the Ancestry website. Let's talk about new and updated historical record collections on the site. So since our last episode of What's New at Ancestry in December, we have added about 62.8 million new historical records to Ancestry. Um, these records are from all different countries all around the world. And um, the easiest way to find them, of course, is through the card catalog. So if you're new, um, I'll give you a quick tutorial. If you're not new, um, stay tuned. We'll talk about some specific records. So the card catalog is my favorite feature on the whole Ancestry website. It's found under search. So if you click on search, it's down here toward the bottom. This is a default sorted by date added. I can actually change that to date updated. You'll notice I have updated databases and I have new databases. That tag, that little blue tag stays on there for 90 days. So if it has an updated or a new tag, you know something changed in the last 90 days. Of course, new databases um, like this one from the National Portrait Gallery in the UK um, is super exciting. Um, the, they are brand new records or in this case images on Ancestry. Super excited about this set of records. Now, all databases on Ancestry, uh, if you scroll down past the search box, you're going to see two things. One is the source information that tells you where Ancestry obtained these records from. The next is going to be a database description that gives you some information about the collection, um, what's included in it. Um, and in this case, this is, again, the National Portrait Gallery in the UK. Uh, it has the name of the portrait, the name of the subject of the portrait, 
birth and death dates of the subject where they're available, the name of the artist, when the portrait was created, a brief biography of the subject if they were someone of note, um, some details, some artistic details about the medium, and then the reference number for the gallery. So that's um, all of the information there. Now yeah, let's come over here um, and you're gonna see there's also a browse box. Anytime there's a browse box on a database on Ancestry, it means that there are images. Of course, this is a portrait gallery collection, so that makes sense. Um, but that's true of any database on Ancestry. If there's a browse box, that means there are images. If there is no browse box, that means it is an index only. If you wanna know more about index only record collections on Ancestry, do a search here on the YouTube channel for um, index only on Ancestry, and you'll see a video I created all about those records. So that um, is how you look at those particular collections and understand a little bit more about them. I'm super excited to dive into that. I don't have very many notable English ancestors, uh, but I do have a couple um, that I've been able to connect to, and I'm curious to see if there are portraits of them from the portrait gallery, because it's not something I ever uh, that ever occurred to me before. Okay, another thing that I wanna point out in this month's new and updated record collections is the Find a Grave indexes. So if you're not familiar with Find a Grave, um, actually let's go to, let's do Mexico. Um, so if you're not familiar with Find a Grave, um, it is a separate website, findagrave.com. Uh, it was started um, as a community, volunteer community project. Ancestry purchased the website. We now host it. It is still fully free and it is still, um, the content is still created by volunteers, by people who just want to go around and photograph cemeteries and then they upload the headstones from those cemeteries, transcribe the information off the headstone to make a memorial page, uh, uh, find a grave page. And so what happens is two things. One, people continue to die and be buried. And so new tombstones are available um, on a fairly regular cadence. And then also people go out and find new cemeteries or sections of cemeteries that were never photographed and, and uploaded to find a grave. And so new um, pages are constantly being created on the find a grave website. So about once every month, six, uh, well, they, it, they try to do it monthly, but sometimes it's like six or eight weeks. But the, our content team here at Ancestry goes out and re-indexes all of the pages on Find a Grave so that they can update the existing index databases on Ancestry. So why do we do this? Well, because this other website over here with these images and these details, right, we wanna be able to provide you with hints in your tree provide you with a way to link to these pages over here. And so we have to copy this, these records, re-index them so that we can add the new records being created into the index to make them searchable and findable. And so every, um, you'll see here, sorry, um, every different country, that's how we divide up the Find a Grave. So Find a Grave is just one giant website. Everything's over there, they have their own search and organizational structure that's different than the Ancestry databases. But the way that we've decided to create the indexes on Ancestry is by um, country. So for example, if I do a search here for Find a Grave, you'll see the 11 different databases that we have. Of course, one of them is global. So if it doesn't fit into one of the existing countries, uh, we do that. You can also see over here the record counts and how um, how many cemeteries have been um, photographed and how many find a grave pages have been created for each country. And sometimes it's a lot and sometimes it's just a little bit, but we update those on a fairly regular basis. So that is the find a grave record collections. And then the last thing that I just want to point out today is um, the slave records. So on Ancestry, um, as new records become available, one of the things like with the Find a Grave databases that we do is we update existing databases. Sometimes we get brand new records and we create brand new databases. 
but sometimes those updated databases are more records that have been found, more years that have been found, um, maybe a different county, and it applies to the same database, and so we put those in there. Um, and so that happens to be the case with um, some of these databases that get updated, and so read the database description to understand that. But what I particularly want to point out, especially as we are um, heading into or in Black History Month, is that this, all of the slave records on Ancestry um, are all free. Uh, they're free to anyone to search at any time. They are not part of the subscription service um, of Ancestry. So Ancestry has 30 billion records on our site, um, but some of those records are in front of that subscription service. And these records are part of those because we feel like this is important at-risk history that just needs to be preserved and made accessible to everyone. So if you're interested, um, you can do, a, do searches here in the card catalog to see what other records we have for those of you who are researching either enslaved people in your own family history, or if like myself, you are the descendant of enslavers and you want to learn more about the individuals that they enslaved and help to make those records more um, accessible and more easily findable for other people. If you um, want to learn a little bit more about that process and how I do that, I do have a video here on the Ancestry YouTube channel called Documenting the Enslaved in Your Family Tree. And again, we'll provide a link to that in the um, description. I don't know why that word keeps escaping me. Um, and you can link to that there, or you can just do a search for that here on YouTube. Okay, so those are some of the new records. I encourage you to go explore the card catalog, see what else is new that might pertain to your family tree. I know we have uh, records from, a ton of records from Wisconsin that just came online, a bunch of records from France, um, some records from Mexico. So in addition um, to the records that we talked about already, that is what is happening in content. Now, I do have one final sneak peek for you before we wrap up today. Um, I know that a lot of you here in the United States are getting really excited, as am I, for the release of the 1950 U.S. federal census. Uh, let me just give you the rundown for those of you who don't know. In the U.S., we take a census every 10 years. We've done that since 1790. The last census was two years ago. Uh, however, those censuses are private for 72 years. So privacy laws protect them. The government holds on to them. Nobody sees them, including ancestry. So the 72-year clock for the 1950 census is up on April 1st of this year. So in just two months, less than two months now, <laughs> okay? Um, and so Ancestry, just a couple of weeks ago, um, actually maybe even just last week, we put out a blog post about how we are going to be processing those 1950 census images and getting that index ready so that it is searchable for you. So if you didn't know we have a blog, surprise, we have a blog. <laughs> you can find it at blogs. B-L-O-G-S, plural, blogs.ancestry.com. And you'll see there an article about how uh, Ancestry made this announcement that for the first time ever in processing a census, we will be applying some brand new handwriting recognition technology to index as much of it as possible, as quickly as possible. As a genealogist, I am like, geeking out about this so hard. <laughs> like I'm so excited, um, both about the technology and what's possible and what it means for the future, but also about the fact that it means that the 1950 census, um, as soon as the government releases it, Ancestry is going to get to work, getting it indexed so that I can find my mom's aunt and prove whether or not she was actually in Panama or not, which is the family story. <laughs> so uh, super excited about that. We will be talking more about the 1950 census um, at Roots Tech, so be sure to um, listen up there for some additional information we'll be sharing. Uh, we are doing this uh, indexing in partnership with Family Search, and so we're collaborating together um, on the creation of this this index, and we're super excited about that. So we'll talk more about that at Roots Tech. And then following Roots Tech, in the weeks leading up to um, the release of the census, 
we will be talking about it probably a lot on our social media channels. So um, just if you don't know where to find us, here's where you can find us. <laughs> uh, Ancestry does have a Facebook page. And so I encourage you to come and follow us there or like us there. And every other Tuesday or so, I do a Facebook Live in the or early afternoon. And one of the topics for sure will be uh, the 1950 census, what you can do to get ready and, and um, what you can do with those records once they're released. Ancestry also has an Instagram page. You can, if you're on, if you are on that channel, you can follow us there and that will give you some additional insight. We also will share some information there. Um, we also have a uh, TikTok page. And on any of these channels or on, like if you're on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, if you ever post anything about discoveries you're making on Ancestry or the story of one of your ancestors and, and some of the photos and records and things that have, have helped you get to know them better, I would just invite you to use the hashtag MyAncestryStory. We follow that hashtag, well, we own that hashtag and we follow it really closely and we always want to hear and see the stories that you're discovering in your own family tree. And then if you're so inclined, uh, you can also find me on Facebook and on Instagram as well. And I um, tend to share a lot of things, <laughs> both about family history and about family, um, because I just am so passionate about uh, the importance of um connecting people with their families, past, present, and future. And I have learned the power that that holds uh, in and the connection that we need in the world today. So uh, there you go. You can find me there. Well, that is all I have prepared for you today. So until next time, I'm Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.